This is uh, MathHeals.com if you want to come here to find more links to YouTube math videos. Let's take a look at finding the least common denominator and forming equivalent rational expressions. So let's look at our first problem. And we got 1 over 12 x to the third y and um, 3 over 8x squared y to the fourth. Now finding the least common denominator. We're going to write prime factorization of each denominator. So write the prime factorization of each denominator. So we have 12x to the third over y, and we got 8x squared y to the fourth. Now 12x to the third y and 8x squared y to the fourth, we're just going to work with the numbers in terms of the factoring them. Um, then we'll talk about the others. Well, 12, that's 2 times 2 times 3 times x to the third times y. For the 8, that'd be 2 times 2 times 2 times x squared times y to the fourth. Now the LCD is the product of each factor the greatest number of times it appears on a single line. <coughs> So the LCD is the product of each factor. The greatest number of times appears on any single line. Well, let's start with 2. I'm looking for the greatest number of 2's on any single line. Well, here's one line, here's another line. A uh, number of 2's here is 2 of them. And number of 2's down here is 3 of them. So the greatest number of 2's on any single line is 3 of them. So I'm going to have 3 of them. I go to my next factor, the 3. I'm looking for the greatest number of 3's on any single line. There's one here, none here. So the greatest number of threes on any single line is one. Then I go to the x's. I'm looking for the greatest number of x's on any single line. Here there's three of them, and here there's two of them. So the greatest number of x's on any single line is three. And then go to my y's. Um, here's one y, and here's four y's. The greatest number of y's on any single line is four of them. So we'd have two, four, eight times three is twenty-four. 24 x to the third y to the fourth would be our LCD. <coughs> Let's look at our next one. So it's 9 and x plus 4. And I should try to remove the sheet and see if I can actually write right on this. I uh, better not. Might ruin my. I got a little piece of paper on this um, tablet that paper is about shot. Over 5. Um, well, if I'm going to find the least common denominator, they should both have denominators. So let's rewrite the 5 as 5 over 1. Okay, so our LCD. Um, we're going to factor each one of these. This one's kind of boring. Uh, x plus 4, there's nothing to factor, and 1, there's nothing to factor. So our least common denominator. Um, we start with the x plus 4. I'm looking for the greatest number of x plus 4s in any single denominator. Well, or any single line, sorry. There's uh, 1 here, none here. So that'd be 1. Now the um, 1 is trivial, so my LCD is actually just x plus 4. Let me um, 
to our new tab, new new uh, document here. There we go. And let's look at the next one. <coughs> so I got five over three x minus nine, and nine over eight x minus twenty four. Okay, so find our LCD. Come over here, and we'll do the prime factorization of each one of these. Now these are getting a little bit more exciting. Uh, both of these would be GCF. First one here, I can factor a 3 out, and that leaves me x minus 3. Next one, I can factor an 8 out, and that leaves me x minus 3. So our LCD, if I start with my first... Um, first factor, 3. I'm looking for the greatest number of 3's on a single line. Now this 3 being trapped with the X doesn't count. We're talking about single 3's. Well there's one uh, 3 here, there's none down here, so the greatest number of 3's on a single line is 1. And actually that's not factored, is it? To quit watching the show, I got, <laughs> got muted, but it's a uh, uh, house on Haunted Hill, I think it is. Okay, go to the twos. I'm looking for the greatest number of twos in any single line. None here, three here, so it'd be three of them. And then I go to the x minus three. I'm looking for the greatest number of x minus threes in any single line. There's one here, one here, so the greatest number of x minus threes in any single line is one. Now again, we don't count how many there are. We're looking for the greatest number of them on any single line. Two, four, eight times three is twenty-four times x minus three, and that'd be our least common denominator. Let's look at this one. <clears throat> Got x squared minus 9x plus 20 and 5 over x squared minus 16. Okay, so I'm going to do the prime factorization. I'll factor each one of these. Now x squared minus 9x plus 20, this is the PSD method, and this uh, x squared minus 16 is difference two squares, dots. Well, this factors as x minus 4 times x minus 5, and x squared minus 16 factors as x plus 4 times x minus 4. Let me show the steps over here, if you need to see them. For the x squared minus 9x plus 20, it's PSD because it's x squared, x, no x, and there's no number in front of your x squared. PSD, we take the number at the end, um, ignore the sign if there is one. So we've got 20. And we're going to write down all the products give us 20. So 1 times 20, 2 times 10, um, 4 times 5. The S column, we'll add them together. 1 plus 20 is 21, 2 plus 10 is 12, 4 plus 5 is 9. Now, the difference column will subtract them. 20 minus 1 is 19, 10 minus 2 is 8, 5 minus 4 is 1. The number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 9, which is right here, which means we use 4 and 5. Our larger number, which is the 5, will be the same sign as the middle term, which is negative. Now, the number of circles in the S column, S for same sign, so if this is negative, then the other one is negative. Okay, x squared minus 16. Two terms, the minus three in it, difference two squares. We try to write it as something squared minus something else squared. You ask yourself what times itself gives you the x squared, and that's x. And you ask yourself what times itself gives you 16, and that's 4. Difference two squares says you take what's in your first parentheses, you add what's in your last. Take what's in your first, and you subtract what's in your last. And that's how we get this. Okay, so I, fa I factored those. Then figure out what LCD is. We'll start with the first factor, the x minus 4. I'm looking for the greatest number of x minus 4's on a single line. There's one here, there's one here. So the greatest number of x minus 4's on a single line is 1. I then go to my next factor, the x minus 5. And I'm looking for the greatest number of x minus 5's on a single line. There's one here, none here. So the greatest number of x minus 5's is 1. And then the x plus 4. I'm looking for the greatest number of x plus 4's on a single line none here, one here, so it would be one. So that would be our LCD. 
And let me start a new page. And let's look at the next one. Okay, so we got 1 over x squared plus 6x plus 9. And we got 5 over x squared plus 4x plus 3. First step, uh, factor all of your denominators. So I got x squared plus 6x plus 9 and x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now both of these are the PSD method. And this one factors as x plus 3 and this one well, x plus 3 times x plus 3 and this one is x plus 1 times x plus 3. Now I'm going to go back and show the factoring on that, but um, let me find the LCD first. Okay, we start with our first factor, the x plus 3. I'm looking for the greatest number of x plus 3's on a single line. There's two of them here, there's one of them here. So the greatest number of x plus 3's on a single line is 2. So we're going to have two of them down here. Then I go to my next factor, the x plus 1. I'm looking for the greatest number of x plus 1's on a single line. There's none here, one here. So the greatest number of x plus 1's on a single line is 1. So that'd be our answer. Now the x squared plus 6x plus 9. It's PSD. Take the number at the end, the 9, ignoring a sign. It's already positive, but we'd ignore it anyway. And we come up with the three columns. The product column, we list all the products, give us 9. 1 times 9 and 3 times 3. In the S column, we'd add them together. 1 plus 9 is 10, 3 plus 3 is 6. In the difference column, we subtract smaller from larger. 9 minus 1 is 8. 3 minus 3 is 0. number we're looking for is number in our middle term, which is 6. So we're going to use 3 and 3. Now our larger number in the P column, and these are both the same, so we just choose any one of them. But large number is the same sign as the middle term, which is positive. number of circles in the S column, S for same sign, so if that one's positive, then this one's positive. And that's how we get this first one. Now x squared plus 4x plus 3. Again, the PSD. Take the number at the end, ignoring the sign. Write down all products, give us 3. This one's boring. Uh, 1 times 3. Add it. 1 plus 3 is 4. Subtract it. 3 minus 1 is 2. Number looking for is the number in the middle term, which is 4. So we're going to use 1 and 3. Now our larger number in the P column, which is 3, is going to be the same sign as the middle term, which is positive. Number of circles in the S column, S for same sign, so if that one's positive, this one's positive. And that's how we get that. Let's look at our next one. So I've got 4 over x, and it says write an equivalent rational expression with a given denominator. So it wants us to write this with a new denominator. It wants us to write it with 5x to the third. Well, you have to look. We have 4 up here. You have to new look at the new thing down below here. Like, uh, we have a 5 down there now. So I need a 5 up here. Now we had an x, but now we have 3x's. So the new thing down below is 2x's. So we have to put an x squared up here. The idea is, whatever you multiply by the bottom, you have to multiply by the top. So that gives us 20x squared over 5x to the third. And that would be the equivalent of this, this fraction. Let me take a drink here. And let's take a look at the next, next one. We got 1 over abc squared. And we'll write it with our new denominator. <coughs> a squared, b to the third, c to the seventh. Well, we have a one up on top. We have to look at the, the new things that appeared downstairs. We had one a. We now have two a's, a squared. So we multiply the bottom part by a, so we have to multiply the top part by a. 
we had one B here, we have three B's here. So we've got two more B's downstairs. So we have to multiply the top part by B squared. We had two C's, we now have seven C's. Um, so we put five more C's downstairs. So we have to multiply the top part by C to the fifth. Whatever you multiply by the bottom, you have to multiply by the top. So that gives us A, B squared, C to the fifth, over A squared, B to the third, C to the seventh. Now that's how you think of uh, the the where you have letters. You look at how many you had before, like I had two C's and I have seven C's. So I put five more down there. So I put five up here. For the B's, I had one B, I had now I have three. So I put two two more down there. So I put two more up here. Here I had one A, now I have two A's, so I have put one A up there. Now it's a little bit different when you get to the factory ones. So let's take a look at that. We got seven over x minus three, and we want to rewrite it with this denominator. So x squared minus eight x plus fifteen. Well, first thing we got to do is factor this, and this is a PSD, and it factors this way: x minus three times x minus five. So that's how we want to rewrite it. Unless you factor it, you can't see the new thing that was added to it. Now, if I look downstairs here in the denominator, I got x minus 3. The x minus 3 is still there. The new item downstairs is the x minus 5. Well, if we put it down there, we have to put it up here. So again, I look at uh, what it had, and that remains, and we look for the new thing downstairs, so which is x minus 5. Whatever you put down there, you have to put up here. The ru mathematical rule on it is wherever you multiply by the bottom, you have to multiply by the top. So up on top here, uh, 7 times x is 7x. 7 times negative 5 is negative 35 over x minus 3, x minus 5. And that's our answer. <coughs> now, last problem. We've got 9x, and we want to rewrite with the denominator x squared minus 5. Well, this doesn't have a denominator. Well, that's easy. We can create one. So let's put over 1. And we want um, to have a denominator of x squared minus 5. You have to look at your old denominator, which was 1, and you ask, what did I multiply it by to get my new one? And you multiply it by x squared minus 5. So whatever you multiply by the bottom, you have to multiply by the top. Well, up on top, 9x times x squared is 9x to the third. 9x times negative 5 is negative 45x over x squared minus 5. And that's our answer. And at the end of that section, I believe, yep. So let me save this.